Hello, it's time for another sourdough bread recipe. So lately I've been seriously in love with fennel seeds and I've been having fennel tea every single day. But then I had the idea to also put them in my sourdough bread and I did. Guess what? Came out amazing. So that's what I'm going to share with you in today's video and without further ado, let's jump right into making this incredible spelt and fennel seed sourdough bread. To start with, we're going to need a sourdough starter that has been recently fed and allowed to double. My starter is 50% white flour and 50% whole wheat flour, equal amounts of flour and water. Check out this blog post where I shared exactly how I create, maintain and refresh my sourdough starter for weekly use. I'm going to use 200 grams of the starter for this recipe. Next, I'm adding 600 grams of water. I'm using room temperature water, but if it's cold at your home, you can use warm water to speed up the process, just not over around 38 degrees Celsius, or otherwise you can harm the yeast. Next, I'm going to whisk the water in the sourdough until it's bubbling happily. And now it's time to add the flour. For this recipe, I'm going to use 700 grams of white spelt flour and 300 grams of whole grain flour. I love the taste and texture of spelt, but feel free to use regular wheat if you prefer. You'll just need to adjust the amount of water slightly. The last ingredient at this point is extra virgin olive oil. Not only does it make the bread taste so much better, but it makes the dough so much easier to work with because it's less sticky this way. Then I take my Dutch whisk and mix the dough roughly. This is just a very preliminary mixing to make sure all the flour is incorporated into the dough. Then I'll cover the mixing bowl and leave it to rest for 30 minutes. This rest period is called autolyse and it allows the flour to absorb the water, which means that the dough will be much, much easier to work with later. The next step is adding salt, fennel seeds, and a little bit more water. I'm adding 24 grams of fine sea salt around 40 grams of fennel seeds and 50 grams of water. Now it's time to knead the dough until it's very elastic and soft. It's going to take somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes depending on how fast you are. At the beginning it will feel like there's too much water but just keep kneading and all of it will get absorbed sooner or later. If you feel that the dough is sticking too much at any point just rinse your hands, shake off the excess of water and knead again. I need using the pincer and stretch and fold method. I first pinch the dough like this, then I stretch it out and fold it onto itself. When it stretches, just make sure you don't overstretch it because you might break the gluten strands. So when you feel the resistance of the dough building up, you'll know that it's time to stop. Once the dough is very elastic, it's time to cover it and leave it to rest for 30 minutes. Then repeat one cycle of stretch and fold. Leave to rest for 30 minutes and then do it again. Do it 3-4 times in total. With each stretch and fold, the dough is going to feel much softer, smoother and more elastic. This is the first stretch and fold. This is the second one. And this is the third one. Then leave the dough until it's expanded by around 30 to 50 percent. It's important not to over ferment it at this point and you'll know that you have overdone it when the dough is too sticky and it doesn't hold its shape well anymore. Also when there are a lot of big bubbles in it. The next step is shaping. First I'm going to take the dough out of the bowl carefully and place it on a clean unfloured surface. Then sprinkle some flour on top of it, divide it into two equal pieces. Flip each piece, fold it in half like this so that all sides are floured now and then pre-shape it just like this. This is a very rough pre-shape, it doesn't have to look like a perfect boule. And do the same with the second loaf. Cover with a towel and leave it to rest for 30 minutes. It's time to prepare the bannetons now. Just sprinkle some corn flour inside to prevent sticking. And now it's time for the real shaping. So sprinkle each loaf with some flour, flip it, 
shape it into a rough rectangle and then stretch and fold onto itself just like this do it on all four sides until you're left with a tight parcel flip it and tighten the surface like this apply pressure by pushing your fingers and don't forget to position your thumb at the front of the loaf just like this to create that beautiful pressure place the loaf in the banneton with the seam up and repeat the same shaping process with the second loaf Place both bannetons in plastic bags and leave them to rest for the final proof. If you leave them out on the worktop, it might take you just two or three hours, but you can also put them in the fridge for the entire night. Do whatever works with your schedule. It's time to bake the bread when it's grown considerably and you can use a finger test for that. If the loaf is ready to be baked, if you press a floured finger into it, the dough will spring back up gradually. If it's not ready yet, it will spring back too quickly and if it's overproofed, it won't spring back at all. Preheat the oven in the Dutch oven to 260 degrees Celsius, which is usually the maximum temperature for most ovens. And then carefully drop the first loaf into the Dutch oven. Slash it with a razor blade. I usually make three parallel lines like this. Cover the lid and place it in the oven. Reduce the temperature to 230 degrees Celsius and bake for 20 minutes. Then remove the lid and bake for another 20 to 22 minutes until the crust looks perfect to you. While the first loaf is baking, you can place the second one in the fridge. This will prevent overproofing and will give the loaf an even better oven spring. Once the first loaf is done, take it out of the oven and cool on a rack. Place the Dutch oven back in at the maximum temperature of for 10 minutes. Then take it out, place the loaf in, slash it, cover the lid, and bake in exactly the same way as the first one. And that's it. And now it's time to slice into the first loaf. Yum! Always wait for at least 30 minutes before slicing it because the bread keeps baking for the first 30 minutes after coming out of the oven. Also bear in mind that spelt will never have as much oven spring as wheat. It will be a little bit denser, but it has such a beautiful nutty flavor that is definitely my favorite. Look how soft it is and how lovely the crumb looks. A simple slice of bread and butter is simply heaven. You must try it. And the fennel seeds make it so interesting like no other bread. And now for the timings, there are 22 to 23 degrees at my apartment. I started making the bread at 11 in the morning. I started shaping it at 5 p.m. Then I left it to rest for 30 minutes, shaped the bread, and then I left it to ferment for two hours and 30 minutes. And while the first loaf was baking, I put the second one in the fridge to prevent over fermenting. So I really hope that you're going to give this recipe a try. And if you do, please, please, please send me a picture on my social media because I love seeing your pictures. They always make my day. All the links are down in the description box. Also, if you missed any of my other sourdough recipes, I will leave them all linked in the description box for you as well. Thanks so much for watching. Happy baking and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.